Gentlemen, the time has finalmente come. The Mazak has come up to temperature. We've been using it as a machine, <laughs> as a machinist storage lot for uh, nigh on two years now. You, you can't rush this old tired iron. So you got to come up the temperature nice and slow, age properly in the shop. Get used to its env environment. Q Ensign Expendable. So, just like a laminate floor, you got to put it in the room for a while, let it acclimatize, let it swell, let it shrink, let it swell, let it shrink. Get the checks out of it. This is my buddy Duclaw. He's an Alec chicken. He's a little bit more familiar with the uh, industrial systems than I am, so I invited him over to help us out to do an assessment. Now, some guys got on me for calling this a Mazak, whereas they say, it, they demand you say Mazak, but Yamazaki machinery, Yamazaki. Mazaki. Huh? Huh? So here's the thing. Of course, because this is a basket case, wires everywhere. And uh, something tells me they did not spec a Balder motor on this <laughs> straight from J.A. Pan. We got to do a bit of digging. And uh, yeah, look at the wires on her. Wow. Now, this is where the wires come in, and there happens to be something real interesting here. Oh, it sprung a leak already. Uh, voltage low high so this that motor will run 20, 220 or 408 so will all the other motors on here all the transverse and up down in and out all that sort of stuff it's all dual voltage but we got some questions as to well first off we need three phase and here in Norte America your common citizen is not allowed to have three phase it's too expensive to to implement in your home shop so we either need a roto phaser or a variable frequency drive or a static phase converter so we set to peel them back the foreskin to reveal the schmegma within and what is going on here there's all these contactors each of these motors over here will actually run 220 or 460 or 480 something like that being as how this was not factory we decided to have a look in here and uh, old Duclaw is just too damn efficient put the cover back on but this goes direct to a contactor so it is not it is not set up on that key switch to change the voltage to low and high voltage and that's why these wires we think are disconnected and that's why we think they've also disconnected this so that if it's on 440 volts we don't fry anything in case some you know button pusher gets in there finds the key switches it over so here's our plan here's our plan we're gonna buy a VFD now fortunately my buddy Duclaw he got <laughs> don't ask too many questions about that nickname but it has something to do with a inward hooked <laughs> prehensile or no uh, raspy incurving hook <laughs> raspy incurving hook a vestigial tail so we got to figure out what is the low and high voltage. This is a nine wire motor and yay, because of all the schmoo what leaks off the table, no markings at all. So that is going to be a bit of a head scratcher. And as I said, my buddy uh, had to put on the cape and go and save some salty fishermen. So he's out. It rubs the rust on its nuts or else it gets the hose again. Speaking of easing yourself into somebody else's skin. Ah, here's the thing. Pulse Bravado has served me quite well. If in it's tinged with a little bit of the humility what comes with years and years of getting kicked in the teeth. But this fucking thing, I don't know, partner. I, that's the thing about Alec chickens. You never want to show fear. <laughs> they can sense it. But, uh... This thing, you know, man, you slip quick, stop and lip. So um, I, I say it's just going to, we're, we're going to get the drive on here and she's just going to fucking flash right up. But fuck me, partner, I ain't so sure between you and I. So here's the problem. We decided, okay, be <laughs> before my buddy, the Alec Chicken there, you got to call to uh, something about, uh, something about semen in need. It just drops everything. Now, what? <laughs> What he does, what the old Duke Law does in the comfort of his own leather fetish bondage bar is his own affair, but <laughs> he, sh he sure took off in a hurry as soon as he got that call. Now, that leaves us to this here motor. 
And as beautiful as it is made, look at the look at the gland ends on here. Look at that. There's they've been wrapped with twine. Because of all the schmoo leaking down into the box, there's no markings. No markings at all. Now this is running on 480 volts. We're gonna change that up to 220 because it's everything's Y, all the motors are Y motors. So we can go and parallel those Ys and we get lower voltage. We can run it on lower voltage. If and that's gonna work, I'm not sure. The case remains that we need to identify all these leads in order to get this thing to chooch on 220 volts. Now, first instinct when confuddled with the unknown is to grab the side cutters and start adding and subtracting jumpers and wires and this and that. But here's the thing, partner, you got to give yourself time to think. Your brain is not a confuser what goes through a list of instructions. You need time to, to break it down into little parts. If you don't understand the, the, the whole, <laughs> there's a preparation ice joke in there somewhere. You don't understand the whole, you need to break it down into smaller bits, what you do understand. And your brain needs time for lateral thinking, to make connections laterally, not make mistakes. So you gotta give yourself the time. If there's somebody breathing down your fucking neck, telling you, go, 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 <laughs> hand them the side cutters and say, give her partner, because you need time. You gotta have the confidence in your abilities to take the time to troubleshoot this proper wise. So that's what we are going to do. Now, I know this is a Y connected motor because it's on the nameplate. <laughs> and also, as, as confirmation that somebody hasn't fucked with this, there are three wires here and they are all, they all have continuity. That means internally they are all connected. So what we can do here, and I'll do a video about this uh, Delta connected, Y connected, how to troubleshoot, how to uh, label these all, if in, you don't have any labels at all on her, because a lot of times the guys in the shop do fabric problem and stuff, they pick up a motor for cheap off Fleabay or whatever, and it's just a dog's breakfast, they end up wasting their money because they can't figure out how to wire it up. But I will show you that. We'll go on the workbench though because this is a little, well, well, we'll do it in another video. In this case, we know it's a Y connected motor, but we don't know what the leads are. So what do we do? We stop, we have a sip of coffee, a smoke, whatever, and we draw ourselves a picture. Generally, if you're working uh, in a technical domain, you are a visual person. Give your brain a chance to think visually. So we draw a picture. Here we got the three-phase Y-connected motor. Now, what does this actually mean? This confuddles a lot of people because this is not this. There's a disconnect there. So what we do is we break it down even more. Done is I've dialed back the abstraction. Of course, this iconography, very useful, but it is still an abstraction. And if you haven't internalized it, if you don't know inherently what is going on, this doesn't tell you anything. It's the same as me saying Y or a star. I, I use Y because I prefer. I'm a Y guy. I mean, Avi. So <laughs> these are both abstractions. And if you don't fucking understand what's going on inside here, this doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. So we dial back the abstraction and, 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 and dumb down the iconography. This is what's actually going on here. Count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, nine wires. Hence the nomenclature, nine wire Y wound motor. And the center tap here, the center tap, we don't get to see that. So we need to check that it's there. But essentially what's happening is each coil, and these are magnetic coils, and they're all wound 60 degrees from each other. They all come out like this. Now, if we want the high voltage, of course, if we want to run it on high voltage, we need more resistance, otherwise it, it burns out, more impedance. So what we do is we connect up these guys. So this guy will get connected here, and then this guy will get connected here, and then this guy, all the center taps get connected, and then on the outside, that's where we put the three phase in. So we'll put 440 here, we'll put 440 here, we'll put 440 here. 
Now, if we want to go lower voltage, what we need to do is we need to parallel these. So instead of the one Y, we're going to take this Y and we're going to double it using these outside windings. How do we do that? Well, we just wire up the connections different. So instead of the one Y, what we get is two separate Y's. I'll make a drawing. This here is where it gets a little fucky, as witnessed by my stumble at the start gate. Remember, we got nine wires coming out of this motor. So this center, this center part still has the tap internal. We don't get to see that. But all these outside windings all have the wires coming out. So all we need is there's three wires from this tap, but we need the six wires from this uh, Y, and, and that gives us, of course, nine wires. We're, we're not losing any wires. The problem here is because we're uh, relying on the changing magnetic fields to get this thing spinning a thing, and if we get the polarity wrong or if we get the phasing wrong, the thing is not going to run proper. It might burn out. It might just not have enough torque. So we need to ensure that we take this one, you know, each one of these out individually and we keep the phasing. So, so if this guy, so this point here needs to be connected with this point. This point needs to be connected with this point because if this point gets connected with this point, the magnetic fields are going to be fighting each other. They're going to be opposite. So we really need to take care and measure properly so that we get the phasing correct. Again, a pictographic representation, what doesn't tell you what's going on, unless you already know what's going on. So because we know what's going on now, we can figure this out. Four and seven get connected together here. Five and six, right? Six and nine get, get, take, get that, bleh, bleh, easy for you to say. And then line in, of course, L1, L2, L3 into the end here. So for the two, it, it doesn't help us here because we don't have the wires numbered. We got to get to stage one, which is wire in these here numbers. Now we don't get to see this center tap. This could also be a neutral if you needed uh, 120 volts out of here or 220 volts out of it. Anyway, don't worry about it. That's the neutral point. So we know 10, 11, and 12 are in the motor. We cross those out. Don't need them. Do not need them. And as you see, there's no 10, 11, 12 on this schematic for the, for the connection diagram because you can't get to them. On the hunt now for four and seven, we got our clamp on the one. Now, if we find this guy, we know there's only one inductor here, so that's gonna be 2.25 ohms. Everything else is gonna be something like six. Yeah, because we're checking all of these, so that'll be one, two, three, so it'll be six ohms. So let's have a look here. Let's have a look here. Where are we? Okay. So we got 6.7 ohms. We got 2.3 ohms. That's the guy there. And double check. 6.6. .6. So we know this connection is 4 and 7. Now, which is which? Which is 4 and which is 7? What we do is we disconnect them here. And 4 will be, there'll be continuity there. It should be 2. 2.25 and 7 will be open circuit. So that's open circuit. That means this one needs to be 2.4. Perfect. So we know that this guy is 4, this guy is 7. Mark them. The hard part done. We hooped through the jumps, blanched our noodle to al dente. All we got to do is get a proper terminal block to connect 4, 5, and 6 together, and then 7, 1, and the line in, say, and, and so forth. So that's the hard part done. Now, as far as the audit goes, we're getting a variable frequency drive, 220 volts. Why 220 volts? Because we don't need to get an auto transformer. We don't need to buy additional transformer. Why not a rotary phase converter or a static phase converter? One, there's a wild leg that uh, the voltage all over the place. It goes one phase in, three phase out, but one of those phases is craptacular. You only get two thirds of the power out of it. And they're fucking expensive. The antiquated technology, they're more expensive than the vector drive. Unless you have a specific usage case for a variable free or uh, for a rotary phase converter, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Lean towards the new technology, the variable frequency drive.
Even if you don't understand what's going on, it's very simple. Once we get it, I'll even tear it down for you and show you what's going on. Single phase goes into this brain box. It gets rectified into direct current DC, just like a battery. A stored power on some capacitors on the board. And then there's, there's just electronic switches what make three phase out. They're just chopping it up and sending it to the motor. And for something this size, you'd need 30 horsepower. You derate that by half. That'll give you your 15 horsepower spindle motor and 2000 bucks land a rotary phase converter or a digital, a digital static phase converter. It's going to run you five, 10 grand. So lean towards the new stuff because it's, it's, it's a lot better. There's very few people in heavy industry using static phase converters. Well, first of all, they have three phase. They don't need it, but that might be part of the reason why the vector drives are so cheap. The variable frequency drives in any case, audit done. I think we're uh, baby steps in the right direction. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice. Never let anybody get you in a fucking panic. In a troubleshooting situation, you got somebody like that, here's the only correct reply. Give her.